I remember my first time playing the original Super Mario Bros on the Wii Virtual Console. The big difference back then was that game over meant game over. But do one-ups fit in with the modern era? Was it really necessary to put in extra lives in a modern game like Super Mario Bros Wonder? Or is this a game mechanic left over from a different era? Join us for a discussion of the history and use of extra lives in the Mario series. When I played the original Super Mario Bros, I was shocked to find out that when you ran out of lives, you had to restart the game. It was my first experience with permadeath in video games. This was unheard of to me. I couldn't believe it, yet at the same time, it made so much sense. It really made me think of the finality of death. Anyway, let's do a little history lesson. If you go back a little farther than 1985 to the arcade era, the concept of extra lives became the reason someone had to put in another quarter on the game machine. Your average arcade game lets you play for as long as you can until you lose all your lives. Three lives became the standard here. Sure, you'll have some game gods who get hours of playtime off a single quarter, but many more people will lose a bit more often and end up spending more of their hard-earned cash. Then Atari came around and home consoles began to compete with arcades. Most Atari games were just ports of arcade games and had the same mechanics. The extra lives just carried over in these ports as players were used to having them in the initial game. Plus, the extra lives gave a good reason to have to pass the controller to your brother. But if you really think about it, when you bought an arcade game for your house, there didn't really need to be extra lives because the customers were just paying one flat sum for their game instead of paying for each play. I guess it can go into high scores and all that, but extra lives lives just seem like they belong in arcades when you think of them for this purpose. In the NES era, games got much longer than the traditional arcade games, but they were still a shorter experience compared to video games today. Play any NES game with save states and you can finish the whole thing in less than a few hours. There was only so much game you could make on the NES, so in order to make people feel like they got their money's worth, they designed the game so that you would have to replay it over and over again. But once we get to the Nintendo 64 or even some of the higher quality SNES games, it really doesn't seem necessary to game over and make us start the whole game over, so the practice was abandoned and game overs had a smaller penalty, ranging from making you go back to the last save point, which could cause you to have to replay a few levels, or just outright letting you start at the same place with five lives. And once a game gets to the point where a penalty for losing all your lives is just, eh, take some more, then the purpose of one-ups have officially gone out the window. Nowadays, extra lives seem to be on their way out. Games like Mario Odyssey show us that extra lives can be easily removed and not be missed. The penalty for losing in Mario Odyssey is only that you lose 10 coins. That's pretty much nothing. It's a slap on the wrist. But I prefer it that way. I don't need to be punished for dying. I just want to play the game. Not beating the level is punishment enough. Even though they were removed in Odyssey, 1UP Mushrooms are still present in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which at this time is the most recent mainline Mario game. Old habits die hard, I guess. Mario Wonder removed a lot of outdated things like the timer and the pointless point system, but they just don't have it in them to get rid of extra lives. Extra lives are very inconsequential in Mario Wonder. First off, if you get game over, you don't have to go back anywhere. You just get five more lives. I guess there's there's this little penalty that you lose some of your flower coins if you get game over, which is similar to Mario Odyssey's penalty. But really, think about how that just doesn't make that much of a difference compared to other game over penalties that kind of make you play on your toes a little bit. In Mario Wonder, there's also the ability to buy 1UP Mushrooms. There's even a bulk option, 99 1UP Mushrooms for 300 flower coins. Okay, to be fair, you can't do that until you beat the game. So I ask, why have 1UP Mushrooms in the game at all? See, it's strange to think of how little 1UPs mean to a game like Mario Wonder when 1UPs used to be the difference between you starting the entire game over. When a game has permadeath, it makes you play a bit more precisely and adds a lot of stakes to losing. However, it just isn't implemented anymore due to how much it would alienate casual players. I personally don't like permadeath because I don't want to play the same thing over and over again. But I won't 
won't deny there is a unique adrenaline rush I felt when I didn't have that choice. Today, permadeath is often a self-imposed restriction rather than one programmed into the games. Nuzlocke's and Pokemon come to mind. Even games famous for permadeath like Fire Emblem started adding options to remove it in their modern titles. Casual players just aren't gonna go for it. And advanced players are already accustomed to self-imposing rules, so the incentive to put in permadeath as a game setting is non-existent. But why do I find Nuzlocke's and Pokemon exciting while permadeath in Mario is boring? Why is it that I punish myself in Pokemon by making myself start over when I lose, yet when I play Mario games on Switch Online, I use the rewind feature to immediately replay with no penalty? I think it has to do with variety and ways to win. It's more fun to do something over when you play it differently every time. Pokemon is a game that you beat in different ways every time you play it. If you fail a Nuzlocke, you have to start over, same as if you get game over on NES Super Mario. But replaying the Nuzlocke is different. Different Pokemon, different natures, all that stuff. Also, luck is involved. Involved. Platformers have no luck. They are entirely skill-based. Mario levels are always the same, so once I pass it, I'm not really looking to do it again. I want to see what the rest of the game has to offer. Now let's take a look at how 1-Up Mushrooms and coins that grant 1-Ups act as collectibles. 1-Ups aren't just about losing all your lives. They also act as something that you can look for while you're playing the levels. It gives you more of an objective than just getting to the end. If games have extra lives, then they give the player some way to get more lives, and that gives the player more to do within the game. Usually this comes in the the form of getting a lot of a common collectible, like coins, or finding one rare item that grants a whole life, like the 1-Up Mushroom. Extra lives are a reward you get for exploring the levels and finding secrets. Nowadays, we get other rewards, better rewards, such as collectibles, secret levels, or power-ups. 1-Ups seem like a lame collectible compared to those because game overs have no penalty, there's no stakes, the 1-Ups don't matter. Whenever I go into a secret room and it's just coins and nothing else, I'm disappointed. In Super Mario Bros, there were three ways to get extra lives. Finding a 1-Up Mushroom, getting 100 coins, or hitting a sequence of enemies in a row. 1-Ups were scarce in the OG Super Mario. Nowadays, they're everywhere. So, not only was there a big penalty for losing, you were also more likely to get that penalty. I think the most lives I ever had at once in the original Super Mario Bros was 9. I got it through the hidden one in 1-1 and another hidden one in 1-2 which got me to five lives. Then I warped to 4-1 and got the other hidden one in that level, which makes six. Around here, I get 100 coins, which gave me seven lives. In World 8-1 and 8-2, there's even more hidden 1-Up Mushrooms, and that makes 9. And then, when I got those 9 lives, I lost just about all of them on 8-3 to those Hammer Bros. And then the final castle took away the rest. Except one. I had one life, and I got to the end and I hit that ax and dropped Bowser into that lava, and I gotta say, that was a really unique gaming experience. I mean, as much as I'm ragging on one-ups and permadeath and saying how bad they are for games, I'm really glad I got to live through that. Like, if Super Mario Bros. didn't send me back to the beginning, if it didn't have one-ups, if it had the save states or the rewind function, I wouldn't have gotten to experience that. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. It's a nice memory. So were extra lives ever a good game mechanic? No one likes a punishment. Extra lives always seemed like they were an adversary to you. And at the end of the day, that's what extra lives are. One-ups are on the developer's side. They're trying to get you to run out of lives so they can charge you another quarter or they can make the game you paid for seem longer. Fun memory of a high stakes trek through Bowser's castle aside, there's really no purpose for one-ups anymore. So I think extra lives should not get an extra life. Hey, if you like this video about what I think of 1-Ups, maybe you'd like to hear my full review of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Or if you want to actually watch me play the games, check out my live channel. We've got a video on there where we try to take out all the singing piranha plants. It was trickier than you'd think. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.